others even more than love. Since I'm here with the women of West Side Story, I have to say, y'all didn't have to do all of that. (laughs) But we did. We did so many things. We had to do that. What does it mean to be able to say that you share a first with Steven Spielberg? I mean, it was comforting, honestly, when like on our first day of rehearsal, he kind of we sat down and we were I was super nervous. You know, there was a moment of silence for a second. And then he looked at me and he's like, you know, this is my first, this is my first musical. And I was like, and I looked at him and I was like, it was my first movie. And we were like, all right. <laughs> Give it a high five. And we also kind of shared that first with the late, great Stephen Sondheim, or at least I did where it's, it was, it was Steve's first professional gig writing the lyrics for West Side Story. And then we're here thing. 64 years later and it's my prof- first professional gig. And, and I love that connection with me and the Steves in my life. Yeah. And then of course, Arlena, you have the incredible connection of Having to play Anita in a scene with Rita, watching your performance as Anita. You know, nothing prepares you for something like this. And that is the truth. You know, I think my skill set as a triple threat is, you know, I was built to play roles like this. And, you know, it's not every day black, black women get to portray Anita. And, and that inherently makes this portrayal different. And it, it stands on its own two feet simply because of that. What was it like to watch Ariana play Anita and then to see yourself as Valentina? Watching it was not difficult. She's fabulous. It was only difficult to do the scene, the one scene that I do with her, because then suddenly there are two Anitas in the room. So. In this whole reimagining of Tony Kushner's idea to to turn Doc um, into Valentina, Doc's widow, uh, you have this emotional, um, really powerful number. What was it like to get a chance to have that be Valentina's big moment? Let me tell you that when I saw that in the script, I saw the first words, there's a place for us somewhere. I thought, no because they cut it out of the play, you know. I couldn't believe that he was actually bringing back that song because they took it out and nobody ever again heard it, except of course for Streisand's glorious rendition. And that I get to do it as uh, Valentina, I just started to cry, I couldn't believe it because it's still still my favorite song. How did you find the arc of Maria and Anita and really fill these two characters out? I think the fact that we kind of found that separately Mm -hmm. made the scene a lot more believable. Is that like we were very much characters on our own path and we didn't talk about the scene. No, we didn't talk about it. We never discussed that We never talked about it (laughs) because it's probably something that Maria and Anita never spoke of again. Mm -hmm. After the movie ends, I don't know what happens, but Mm. I don't think that they ever touch upon that again. Right. One of your own kind, stick to your own kind. Well, I think it's really interesting, you know, Anita, within the context of that moment, is in the throes of incredible grief Mm. in her, you know, in her own path. And the realization that, Mm -hmm. you know, forgiveness is the greatest act of love that she will ever be able to show this girl that she has come to love as her own, it, it it's going to take every ounce of energy that she has left in her body to do that. Yeah. Um, and, and yet it's the most, one of the most beautiful expressions of love I've ever seen in yeah. a character. Speaking to um, the scene in the drugstore, which I know was so emotional for you performing it back 60 years ago as Anita, This time, Valentina gets a moment to really call what happens to Anita what it is. I have to tell you that that dialogue that Tony Kushner wrote for me was just marvelous. And those last two words before she leaves the room, and I don't want to say them because it is so special, are so moving to me. And he tells me he always gets teary when he sees me do that because of it's the words. The scene in the candy store Mm. was meta on so many different levels. I remember just trying to take care of everyone that day, 
tried to make sure Rita had everything she needed, tried to make the boys more comfortable because they all have hearts of gold and were incredibly uncomfortable with what they were being asked to do because they're like, this is not right. This is not right. You know, so reminding them that like, remember, this is this isn't real. But there is there's a conversation, something that is important to talk about within the context of this scene. And mm -hmm. I believed in the importance of making sure that scene in particular was done right. And I not only for me, but for Rita as well, because she's talked about her real lived experience. And she's also talked about her experience of shooting that scene. And I think these scenes are important because women's issues are important. Talking about the circumstances of assault are important. Um, and I think this film does a respectful but beautiful way of, of carrying on the conversation. And of course, it's incredibly powerful as well because you get to that moment where Rita, as Valentina, gets a chance to call it what it was and to uh -huh. call them at what oh, the they rapists. rapists. Like the hard, hard S. I know your names. You dishonor your, your dead. dead. That's, you dishonor that's, your dead. You dishonor your dead is a really and, hard. God, that was an incredible, incredible performance that she turned in. Oye, honey! Ponle fuego! Vamos! The decision to let the characters slip in and out of English and Spanish and to not subtitle uh, the mm. film. You know, what conversation did you all have with the filmmakers and what did it mean to you to see that on the screen? Wow. Yeah. That's a real creative choice, too. And it was their decision, Tony and Stevens. And they said it was out of respect. They, 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 they just thought, you, you, you'll know what's happening. Initially, I was like, huh? And then the longer I thought about it and be, uh, by virtue of the knowledge of our process that, that we paid so much attention to detail and took such great care with the language. The language, yeah. The first thing they wanted to get right was the question of color and races and differences. They were going to address that no matter what. Making sure that we were delivering. We were delivering time period sensitive words. It, Slang. Time period slang, regional slang, depending right. on what part of Puerto Rico your character came from, what would they say? Yeah. Tony did so much research at a place called El Centro where they have every person pictures and material of every person who moved to this country from Puerto Rico. My life did not come with subtitles. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like my mom and my abuelita spoke Spanish mm -hmm. to me when I was a kid. And when I grew up and went to school yeah. and was mostly in like an English speaking environment, I kind of lost that language. Right. But whenever I was with my abuelita, okay. I didn't always know right. what she was saying, but I knew from her inflection and I knew from her the the way she was talking and maybe yeah. if knowing what she was talking about. That's also a testament to how powerful the performances are yes. because you don't need the subtitles, but also no, it's 2021, learn Spanish. <laughs> Correct. And I'm not fluent. I didn't grow up with Spanish in my in my household, but dag never I understand everything that's happening in that film, mm -hmm. you know? And yes, I'm still taking my Spanish class. Thank Period. you very much. <laughs>